Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Actual Tech Media, and thank you for joining us for today's special launch event. This webinar is entitled Ejecting from the Nine Circles of Tape Hell. We're providing this presentation in partnership with Falcon Store. Falcon Store is pleased to announce today the release of StoreSafe, a revolutionary new way to help you better manage your data protection and archive requirements. We have a number of special guests today from both Falcon Store as well as from customers. And this is going to be a great event for you to learn about what Falcon Store is bringing to the world. On your screen, you can see we have a number of special guests today. First of all, we have Mark Delsman, who is the head of engineering at Falcon Store. We'll also be speaking with Abdul Hashmi, who is the head of professional services at Falcon Store. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll have a special guest from Blue Chip named Mike Borum, who is a technical lead for that company. Blue Chip is a UK service provider that has literally hundreds of customers using the Falcon Store StoreSafe solution and many petabytes of storage under management with Falcon Store StoreSafe. On your screen, you can see we have a robust agenda. We'll start with some housekeeping, after which we'll talk about the historical role of tape with folks from Falcon Store. We'll also then talk about some of the next decade issues, the backup and archive transformations that are going to be required for organizations to continue to meet their data protection goals. We'll then unveil Falcon Store StoreSafe, after which I'll provide you with some thoughts and clarity on the solution. Throughout the event, we'll do some polls and some gift cards, and we'll do that right after my thoughts. And after that, we'll do some Q&A with the Falcon Store gentlemen to get a better understanding for what StoreSafe brings to the world. After that, we'll talk to Blue Chip. As I mentioned, Blue Chip is a UK service provider with hundreds of petabytes of Falcon Store StoreSafe capacity under management. Then we'll do a Q&A with Blue Chip from you, and then we'll end the event with some polls and a final Amazon gift card. So I mentioned that housekeeping, uh, just did some introductions. We'll be doing some introductions again shortly when I bring our friends onto the event. If you have questions, we want to hear from you. Please use the questions button in your console to ask good questions of our presenters for today. You also see some handouts on the handouts tab. Make sure you take a look at those. And there's a series of prizes that we'll be going through on today's event as well. First of all, there's one of two $300 Amazon gift cards coming your way if you're one of the two lucky winners. Please make sure you meet the ATM prize terms and conditions as you'll find on the handouts tab. We'll be awarding these randomly to a lucky winner or to two lucky winners uh, at two points during today's event. But we also want to incentivize great questions from our audience. If you ask the best question in our sole opinion, you could win a $50 Amazon gift card. All you've got to do is ask a great question and we will choose a winner after today's event and we'll notify you if you are the lucky winner. Um, there's no need to ask about it in the Q&A. Winners will be notified after today's event if they were chosen as a winner um, for one of the gift cards that we have available for today. And let's get started with a trip down memory lane. I'm joined right now by Mark Delsman, who's the Vice President for Product and Engineering for Falcon Store, and Abdul Hashmi, who's the Vice President for Customer Success. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. Glad to be here, Scott. Thanks for having well, us. Hey, I'm happy to have you guys here. This is going to be a great discussion. This is something that, you know, for years, organizations have, you know, used tape for lots of different reasons. But let's take, you know, sort of a journey down to the past a little bit and talk about sort of why. So why did organizations choose tape? What's the role of tape been historically in customer environments. Mark, let's start with you. Sure, Scott. So if we look historically, um, you know, organizations wanted to make sure that they had an offsite copy of their data in case disaster struck or whatever. Uh, and tapes provided that portable method to put a lot of data in one place and, and get it offsite. So a lot of business processes grew up around uh, tape and using tape. It was also uh, considered a very cost-effective solution uh, for getting that extra, you know, backup copy of your data. So it was the portability and the cost that I think really fueled uh, tape over time. 
Yeah, you know, as a lot of organizations, most organizations adhere to what we've come to know as the three, two, one rule, right? Um, you know, three copies, two media types, one offsite location somewhere um, of data. Um, Abdul, when you think about some of the customers you talk to in your role as VP of customer success, what are some of the things they like about tape and some of their original reasons, re, uh, reasons for having adopted tape infrastructures? Yeah, so like, like uh, Mark mentioned, it's the economics. Uh, that's how they initially started off. Uh, with the tapes, uh, but uh, the cloud storage decreasing in, in price and the, the, the software and the technology improving and giving them th those capabilities um, obviously has its disadvantages. It's error prone. The restore your backups are, are as good as your restore, and the restore time for tapes, physical tapes, is way um, higher than you would do from a virtual tape. So those are some of the challenges. They want to streamline uh, um, and their backup environment to, and be able to see where their backups are. On the tapes, as, uh, if somebody has labeled them correctly, you would just hope that they have labeled them correctly. But uh, with a software solution, you get to see everything in, in, a, in a console. Yeah, I remember the days of having to label tapes and just hoping that I wouldn't make a mistake. So if I ever had to recover that, I wouldn't pay the price on the line. Um, but when I think about tape, I mean, I actually, you know, I, I don't hate tape. I'm actually someone who has um, appreciated what tape brought to the table. And I think some of the points that Mark made around the benefits of tapes, it's portability. I mean, you can pick up a tape and walk out of the data center, um, which is good and bad, actually. Um, True. But um, from a security perspective, that can be problematic. Um, but when you think about the, the sheer density of tape, um, especially as we see you know, new generations of LTO and things like that, it's pretty incredible just how much you can cram onto a tape you know, between that density and um, some of the new compression technologies that we see um, on data. So, I mean, it's still um, an enviable, uh, you know, sort of uh, media today, um, even when organizations start to look at other solutions for how to store that data. Um, Mark, what are some of your thoughts on some of those benefits of tape um, that you still see out there today? Well, there's no doubt that the tape uh, industry continues to improve the density and, uh, and as they have for, for years and years and years. Um, a flip side to that, though, is you also have to make sure you manage your historical data because at some point those tapes start fading out, uh, not only from the data that's written on them, just as for everybody that remembers the old VCRs at home, right? Uh, that data over time uh, is going to fade some, and you're also going to want to make sure you stay on a current generation of the tape so, so that you're keeping up with current tape drives, tape libraries, uh, and that too. So while there is advantages to being portable and, uh, you know, a, a very well understood technology, you also have to maintain that. Yeah, and that's been one of the big um, I would say hurdles for a lot of organizations that want to make any kind of change to their backup environment, whether it's uh, a new generation of a tape library to get benefits of newer generations of tape, or even a software change. Um, you know, there's a need then to keep, I mean, a lot of organizations keep old tape drives around just because they have old tapes, they want to make sure they can still read them, because backward cat compatibility is not always a given, which is unfortunate. Um, you also end up in situations where when people change software, right, then you're going to have to keep old software around to make sure that you can recover particularly old technologies. And I think your point about degradation of the media is a really important one. Um, Abdul, what are some of your thoughts? I mean, how long does tape last when it's sitting in a storage environment? Well, I mean, typically the claim is it lasts up to 30 years, but you need that environment in terms of temperature, the humidity, everything being 100% correct to be able to, um, to, to, to reach that, that those, sort, those sorts of uh, limits. So, so it does have a, a longer lifespan compared to disk, for example, uh, given, like I said, um, if the environment is correct. Uh, but again, I just want to point out to, uh, to what Mark mentioned, it's, it, it, this is one thing of it, what the organizations or what we hear from customers, what they want is be able to drive analytics from their data, something you cannot do from tape backups because they, these are just sitting on the shelf. And a lot of customers, they make their business decisions based on the data they have. Remember, your data is your asset and they want right. to be able to use it instead of sitting there. So there's a lot of uh, pros and cons to using one versus the other, but uh, clearly 
from what we hear from customers is they, they need to be able to see and make some business decisions and run some analytic and reporting on the, on the data that they have. That's critical. So let's, get, let's drive down on some of the, the emerging requirements that we see around, and maybe not emerging, but emergent um, requirements that we see around um, data protection and archive today. And where we start to see some of the, the, the holes in the armor of tape, um, I think you just mentioned one, um, and that's essentially visibility. I mean, in, in a sense, you have metadata that's stored somewhere, but you still don't know necessarily physically where a tape is all the time, um, unless you have really good inventory and really good processes. And that's problematic because if you can't find a tape, you can't record, you can't restore, and that's generally considered bad. Um, and when we start to think about um, the analytics piece that you mentioned, um, you know, how much are we actually storing? How much are we actually backing up? And are we remaining compliant with data, you know, data laws and things like that? Are we, you know, all these questions come up. Um, and so when we start to think about tape environments, Mark, what are some of the other challenges that organizations are trying to overcome um, with tape environments that are easier to do when you start thinking about disk or cloud-based backup? I mean, what are some of the, the reasons that they're adopting these other technologies? Well, you know, Scott, one, one that, uh we just really it hit us this uh, the last 12 months uh, with COVID affecting all the businesses is people didn't want uh, employees in their data center. And, uh, you know, the transportation of, of physical media offsite also means people had to be uh, coming in and handling things. We, we actually found that there was uh, a lot of interest in uh, being able to move sections of uh, company archives off of tape this last year, just because they wanted to eliminate the the employees, not eliminate them, but eliminate at least the the manual process that involved employees. Uh, so we we had a lot of uh, activity this last year, uh, just because of that very reason. I, I would say a a second challenge with it is. Uh, just the, the uh, I think Abdul mentioned this earlier, just the delay because people were involved in the process. You had to have some, you know, a service go fetch the tape from offsite if you needed to do a recovery. And, you know, your, uh, your recovery time objective uh, has to be considered much, much longer if you do get into the position you have to go offsite to recover it. Yeah, and that's really um, that's really the key, isn't it? I mean, there's those two things you just mentioned, I, and I, in addition to personnel not being able to go into the data center, there's also, a, as we alluded to earlier, a security component to that. I mean, if somebody can walk in and grab tapes, you know, that's they can be lost, they can be stolen, and obviously, you know, this is where we see some, you know, companies literally bringing armored trucks to headquarters to pick up tapes because that's, you know, the data is that is that critical and that sensitive. Um, that gets expensive and the human cost is high. And there's also that in-person component that, you know, increasing the remote organizations don't want to encumber themselves with. Um, but I That's think right. that the more, the operational component to that, the, the RTO, the RPO, you're never going to get to modern RTO, RPO standards with a tape environment alone. Um, there right. might be some, you know, place for tape with archive environments, like long-term archive, but um, Abdul, when you think about customers' requests, uh, requirements around RTO and RPO, what, what are some of the trends you've seen in the past few years that are kind of forcing this, uh, re looking again at the backup environment to try to make things better? So, uh, yeah, going back to my original point is th their recovery point objective is to make sure that they have the data available and their restores are good, right? Having some sort of validation. I have my backups, I can run some validation report and they're all good. Um, and so that time is critical for them uh, as opposed to having it uh, fetched from you know, physical tape, you bring it from an iron mountain, uh, you know, load it into the library and then do the restore and you hope you labeled it right and you restored that. So there's a lot of, um, it's, it's error prone, it's a lot of time consuming. Um, clearly, they, they want to uh, shorten that and get that from newer technologies uh, that they give them the best RPO and RTO. And so that's why they're turning to disk, they're turning to cloud for yeah. to enable those kind of business operations. Now, 
as we look at this shift, um, we see enterprises, they're not just running in those, in many cases, a single backup tool, right? They're running, you know, a combination of different uh, vendor solutions for different business units, different needs um, that a particular tool may be particularly good at addressing. When we start to think about, now not thinking about what Falcon Store brings to the table yet, but when customers are starting to engage Falcon Store, particularly when they're looking at um, environments where there are multiple backup tools, uh, Mark, what are some of the challenges that they're seeing because of the fact that they're running these multiple backup tools, and especially when they really don't want to get rid of them? So what, are they, what challenges are they trying to overcome? Yeah, that, that's a great question because any modern or complex enterprise today uh, has grown up over time, right? And they've got a lot of legacy systems. Uh, virtually no customer is interested in rip and replace uh, uh, approaches to it. There'll be, you know, maybe a newer division that started up or a newer site that is, say, running off of Veeam. Uh, you may have a different site that has uh, IBM I equipment and has been running IBM's BRMS as the backup environment. Uh, and there may be, you know, the engineering group uh, went renegade a few years back and started using Commvault uh, for their backups. It, it, that is normal in what we see in the mm -hmm. enterprise today. And each one of those vendors I, I talked about uh, have perfectly good backup software, but it doesn't integrate with anybody else's, uh, especially on the back end. So you end up, uh, if, if you are sending tapes offsite, from all these different environments, um, they're all different. And you have to make sure you're very good at organizing them. It puts a lot of pressure on the IT administrator uh, also. So you see these enterprises uh, uh, struggling to figure out, is there a way we could simplify this? Is there a way we don't have to buy new tape libraries for every environment? Is there a way we can consolidate at least on the back end and, and not force our divisions, our uh, sites to rip and replace what they currently have. Yeah, that, just, um, just that to, quite up to, I apologize. Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna add to what uh, Mark was saying uh, and just relates to me just uh, a couple of days ago, we were talking to a customer who's using our solution, store safe solution for BM, BR, BRMS, um, they're backing up to us. Now the other division of their, um, uh, uh, using Veeam and so they engaged us. We want to um, point our Veeam solution also uh, have Falcon Store, uh, what, is, what is our path? Can we deploy another um, Falcon Store solution? I said, no, you just pointed to that already solution you have. So this is where we shine, right? Because you could have a complex environment on the front end, all can be pointed to the same store safe solution that Ingest can be coming and you get the, the benefit of a global deduplication repository across all your workloads. Abdul, you just previewed what we're going to actually be announcing right now, um, which is the store safe solution from Falcon Store. You know, some of the big challenges that we just talked about are things like um, the being able to stay application agnostic when it comes to um, support for the storage infrastructure for data protection and archival needs. Uh, being able to stay hardware agnostic to a point where you can use whatever hardware makes sense, whether that's on-premises disk, whether that's still a tape library, or whether that's the cloud as a backup target. Um, but when we think about um, the, the things that customers are trying to accomplish, um, Mark, what would you say are the top, you know, three or four things that Falcon Store is bringing to, to the table with StoreSafe um, that really help these organizations maximize the investments they've already made in their data protection and archival um, environments and to be able to better adhere to the emerging requirements that we just talked about yeah i, I think there's a handful of them that are the the key shopping points or the key indicators that customers look for number one is performance you you have to be very efficient about the backup window. Uh, enterprises expect to be able to dump a lot of data now more than ever, dump a lot of data and be back to uh, compute with their environments. Uh, our store safe product can accept per node 40 terabytes an hour of data, uh, which can uh, 
significantly reduce the backup windows. And Abdul's got plenty of stories about uh, how that's improved situations at our customers. The second one is we talked about the, um, the various environments uh, that customers are backing up. So having uh, uh, these different solutions, being able to direct them at one solution so that we can consolidate all those different backup streams. We can do a global deduplication across it for the lowest um, back-end cost, if you will. And, and the third one I would say is, is the, the flexibility. Uh, you know, we are agnostic to what hardware we're running on. We could also just run in a VM if, you, if uh, that's the preferred solution. So different hardware, different VM, uh, a variety of different backup softwares uh, that can all direct towards us and a variety on the back end. If you still want to output to physical tape and take it offsite, fine, we can, uh, we can certainly do that, but we can also export uh, deduplicated containers out of the back to the cloud, whether that's on-prem or, or you know, one of the uh, commercial cloud vendors. So we give you plenty of flexibility for configuring it, but by doing this global deduplication and this one central point that you could dump all your backups to, we can also do it in the most cost-effective cost uh, manner for an enterprise. So if I'm understanding it correctly, essentially the way that the Falcon Store Star Safe solution is deployed, it essentially appears in these um, other backup tools as a virtual tape library, and then you just manage what actually all of the, the outputs are from there. Is that, is that accurate? That, yeah, that, that is, is that correct. Is yeah. Go ahead, yeah, we, we look at a, a tape library. Uh, we support probably 60 different tape drives or tape libraries where we can emulate them, uh, where you can consolidate uh, all your, your uh, backup environment. We also give you a single management console that can control all of this. And uh, Abdul has some, some great stories about simplifying customer environments, but think of it as before you, once again, you had your Veeam environment, your Confold environment, your BRMS environment. Now you just have one screen and your IT admin can be sitting at home controlling that, all of that environment through that one screen. Abdul, let's hear some of those customer stories. When you think about sort of the most gratifying customer story, the most challenging customer story that was brought to you that StoreSafe was able to help address, what does that look like? And what were some of the technical and business outcomes that that customer was able to achieve? So one of the key things that StoreSafe brings to the table, it doesn't require you as a customer to, to just do that, up, go with that process. Whether you're moving to the cloud, you don't have to move today. You can move certain workloads, whether you want to import from the physical tape library and move it to the cloud, you get, we give you the flexibility. You know, So we have customers who, for example, deploy store safe. Yeah, their intention is to go to the cloud, but they don't want to do it day one. That's okay. You can you can use store safe. You still have the global data duplication repository that you can take advantage. Whenever you're ready, whatever workload you're, you're ready for, you can take it to a cloud of your choice, uh, Azure, AWS, Wasabi, we have IBM uh, a cloud, we have certified many clouds. So it's that flexibility and that assurance that as a customer, I can have that, yeah, I got this. It's a consolidated view. I get 95% um, reduction in my storage. All my complex environment, all the backups are pointing here. But if I need to, I can go to the cloud. If I need to still go to the physical tapes, Backup Store gives me that ability. So it really, you know, is that assurance that they get uh, um, from here, but eventually, yes, they they move their uh, their um, archives to the cloud in a secure data uh, container format. Um, we take it from cloud to cloud or or, or uh, multiple clouds. So really, it's an enterprise solution. No longer you need a array level replication or host level deduplication. In fact, we ask customers to go ahead and turn those deduplication off on the backup software level. Let the backup software do what it's supposed to do, which is to complete your backup in the you know, required window, right? Let all the offloading, you know, the resource intensive operation be offloaded to store safe. Yeah, because that's interesting because uh, deep dupe and compression op uh, operation on the backup software increases the amount of time it takes for a backup to take place. So by- yes, eats into your backup window. 
Yeah. Right. So don't do that. We'll take care of it for you. You've you've solved a, yeah. a, a key problem that a lot of organizations have around that backup window even today. So well, Absolute, well, Absolute, add, Oh, go I, ahead, Mark. I, just got, I was just going to add to it. Not only do you take that off of the backup server, but once again, since we're a global dedupe, we're deduping across a much bigger corpus of data than the individual backup software would be. And it's so very instead of having those isolations. Yeah. So you you probably Sorry, get pretty insane deduplication rates, I would imagine, correct? Very much so. Yeah. Go ahead, Abdul. What what are you seeing in in our customers? Uh, set up. Yeah, because on yeah, th thank you, Mark. Because on customers, they have com in complex enterprises, they have multiple backup software. So everyone is doing the duplication. Not only it eats up to their backup window, but because it's isolated in itself, it can just do it on the appliance level or th that workload level. Th this one backup software is not aware of the other one. When turning that off, not only you increase your backup window time and let the, the backup finish on time. But now you let Falcon Store deduplicate across, just like what Mark was talking about, across all your workload, be it virtual tape or NAS, or in the future, any other ingest. Um, that's a truly global deduplication repository that you get deduplication all across. And what kind of deduplication ratios are you seeing in customer environments with the with the solution? We, I, I have seen customers complaining that their deduplication ratio is too high because we, we need to size, you know, so 80 to one dedupe ratio, um, um, all the way down 10 to one dedupe ratio. Of course, it depends on the workload that you have, um, but, uh, but it's, it's pretty substantial. Nothing you can compare with any um, um, backup software level deduplication. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, why would they complain about that? Do they just not believe it? Uh, they believe it because they see it, uh, but just when it comes to because it, there's, it's it's very co complex in terms of how when you size it because if you're getting there's a lot of variables that go into it. Uh, they just had to add another you know five terabyte of storage for the index, for example, and just because you got a higher deduplication ratio, and so we're like you're a victim of getting a higher deduplication ratio. Of course, at the end he was happy that you know that he's getting that, and uh, but yeah, uh, we've seen anywhere from 90 to all the way down 10 uh, across the board. So Mark, how does that magic, um, I mean, when you think about the solution, because you're one of the architects of the solution, um, what, how does that happen? Like, how are you making that happen? I mean, it's a huge corpus, it's um, a dedicated, I mean, it's, it's what the solution is built for, but how is that all being managed? And um, how are you achieving like some of the goals we talked about earlier? Uh, so a couple of points on that. Uh, the first one, uh, if if a customer's behavior is to back up the same data over and over again, if they're doing full backups on a regular basis, this deduplication ratio starts off as as a five to one or eight to one or whatever the right number is. But every time you back it up, it's going to be almost all the same data again, and so. We'll see these accounts that initially, um, you know, maybe we sized them for an eight or a 10 to one dedupe. And a month later, all of a sudden we see it start edging way up because of, of their behavior of just doing full backups uh, far more often than, than perhaps they need to. Uh, but that's fine. We'll take care of that. We'll eliminate it. We'll uh, clean that out and give them just a really efficient uh, level of of storage. So, so their behaviors, uh, a lot of times, and what they're comfortable doing, we can fit into their business processes. We, as a vendor, aren't dictating business processes to them. And I think for a lot of customers, that's a very important attribute. Now, as far as the technology piece of it, in order to get a really world-class dedupe, um, we, we do a block-level dedupe. We do it at the data you know, the block data level. Uh, but we also take into account that a very common thing to do is to go out and, and say, update files or, or make incremental changes to files. So you actually have to slide your, your comparison for dedupe around so that you can find where the, uh, the, the remaining data picks up. And then you can go say, okay, if I slide my window out to here, 
um, I found the same chunk and now I can dedupe it. So it, it is a very intelligent uh, iterative process to get through the, the data and do the best job at, at reduction that you can. And just now, to add to that, we, oh, in our, yeah, just, just uh, another point on that. In our SIR engine, we have content aware parsers for every backup, specific to every backup software. And as the backup software improves or changes its architecture, we change that accordingly. And so we don't have just a generic parser that we apply it across all the, the, the backup softwares, but we have a particular content aware uh, specific to backup exec, Beam, for example, uh, VRMS, uh, TSM. So, so that is what's giving us also um, the best data reduction rate um, in, in, in the repository. Yeah. And in my experience, deduplication improves performance as well, because essentially if you see a block that's duplicated, you just throw it out. I mean, you have to write a pointer, but that's it. So, I mean, the fastest write you can have is one you don't have to do. Um, yes, absolutely. On so many levels, so actually. Add, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, let me add to that, Scott, because you actually brought up an important point that I, I didn't mention earlier. Uh, a lot of our enterprise customers uh, will also uh, replicate their backups to uh, offsite. Instead of sending it out on tape, they'll have like a, a second data center and they'll make a replica copy. And once you've done a really good job of dedupe and, and gotten the data down to the smallest point possible, how we replicate to the other data center is the unique changed data, none of the existing data. So this makes your communications link highly efficient also, uh, it, since you're not sending over terabytes or petabytes of, of data, you're only sending the, the very essential new uh, blocks of data over. Now, that being said, a lot of our, our customers are very interested in kind of eliminating that replica now so that they don't have to maintain a second data center. And they're actually running the replication to the cloud. Uh, they'll have a, a virtual store safe running at AWS as an example, and that will be their second data center uh, at this point. So once again, it's exactly the same business process. They don't have to change their corporate procedures at all, but it's giving them really innovative ways to be able to uh, run this and keep the, the same high level of protection that they're used to. Just because so it's very to... critical on this point. <laughs> I'm sorry, just one point on this one that, that uh, Mark mentioned. It, it, the same deduplication is also apply, applicable to when you containerize out to the cloud. Because you send less data, you save on the bandwidth, but also when you're restoring, you're, send, you're saving on the egress fees because the, these cloud yeah. providers will change them. Yeah. yeah, from a recovery perspective, egress fees are where it's at. I mean, that's, you know, that's going to be pretty important. So, Abdul, when you think about, you know, customers, especially ones that are more distributed today, um, this bandwidth discussion and you know, quality of connectivity um, concerns in some cases, I would imagine that the solution helps overcome some potential objections people may have around replicating data to another location. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, again, because of our deduplication, we're only uh, sending the unique data. The raw data comes to us, we deduplicate it. So we're sending just a fraction of the data over. This is the local, uh, when we are replicating, we're also scanning the repository of the DR site to make sure that server also doesn't have any uh, deduplicated data. So it's truly unique blocks that we're sending, but absolutely taking in that, that into consideration to save uh, on the bandwidth. Now, later on, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, about sort of how the product works. So we'll save that for, for right now. But let's just kind of recap what some of the business and technical benefits that we've just discussed uh, look like, especially in the context of sort of this tape hell um, that we discussed earlier. So some of the challenges organizations were facing were this idea that they couldn't quickly recover from um, tape because tape was off-site or it was too slow. Another challenge was it was difficult to um, either adopt a second piece of software or replace software, replace hardware because of the need to maintain backward compatibility um, with older hardware and older software. And a third concern was one around potential having to do a forklift upgrade 
um, to make modifications to a data protection or archive environment. Um, I'll start with Mark on this and then Abdul um, sort of, you know, bounce back and forth a little bit, but um, what are, uh, how is Falcon Store in a summary way here um, addressing those key concerns that we talked about before with Store Safe? Uh, yeah, Scott, I would also, also add a fourth that we've talked about, which is security. Uh, Absolutely. Your backup and your data too. So with with Falcon Store, um, in summary, we've we've got a software uh, solution that sits on generic hardware that can accept a variety of inputs from different uh, uh, tape backup software vendors, uh, run on on uh, a wide variety of hardware, or run as a virtual machine. Uh, we consolidate the data across all of those different vendors so we can be the consolidation point uh, for your environment with a single screen that can control the entire environment. And we give you a lot of flexibility and choice of if you want to archive and send it off site, a variety of ways to, to do that. So uh, from a single software solution, we can pull together a bunch of diverse environments in an extremely cost-effective way and give you the flexibility and, uh, and allow you to add the improvements over time. As Abdul said earlier, if you eventually know you want to go to the cloud but you're not ready, that's fine. You can start today with uh, fitting it into, into your current environment and make those improvements over time. Abdul, I have a question for you as a follow-up to that, um, and that's where we're at the discussion. The, quite the, for this one, it's essentially, you know, we hear all these great benefits of what StoreSafe brings to the table to help overcome these challenges we talk, talked about. How hard is StoreSafe to deploy? Um, if you ask me, of course, it's not hard. It goes on legacy hardware. You don't have to make changes as a customer to your SAN environment. Um, we work with any SAN storage, for example. We work with regular uh, uh, network configuration that you already have. So there's not a, any backup infrastructure that you have. Nothing has to change on, on that front also. So from that perspective, it's very easy to, to put it in place, start directing workloads to as you feel comfortable, use the rest of the operations and uh, functions uh, like replication or, or um, sending data off to the cloud. Now, essentially, it feels like we're deploying a, a software that sits alongside everything else. So you don't actually have to change anything you're already doing. You just basically gain a whole lot more benefit and a whole lot more capability. So it sounds like it's super simple to deploy. Find a server, deploy it, and you basically add new backup targets you didn't have before without having to take anything out of the environment. Is that accurate? Absolutely. Nothing needs to change on the front end. All you have to do is just change the path to the new target, which is faculty solution. Excellent. Gentlemen, thank you for this robust discussion. I look forward to bringing some questions from the audience forward to both of you as we go further on in today's event. Looking forward Thanks, to that. And we're going to ask our first poll question of the day. First of all, how much tape are you using today? And while we have our poll questions up, we're going to give away our first gift card. Our first gift card winner, as soon as I can find it, will be Mallory DeRoche from New Hampshire. <clears throat> Mallory will be reaching out to you after today's event, and we will give you instructions on how to uh, collect your winnings. And don't forget, there's two more opportunities to win today. We'll be giving away another gift card shortly and as another $300 Amazon gift card, as well as our best question gift card. We have a ton of questions coming in. Um, we'll be taking some of these questions shortly, and we want to make sure um, that we have time to get to all of them. I'm going to share the results of this poll um, to show you sort of what people are, are where they are today with, in terms of, of tape. So there's only a few percent using just all tape, which doesn't make, you know, doesn't, isn't a lot of surprise at this point. Um, it, there is a lot of, there's a, a number of you still using mix, uh, a mix of disc and tape, and some of you have moved to all disc. And obviously that's sort of where we are. So that's a good thing. And we're gonna move on 
with our next segment. And then um, we'll be doing uh, another, uh, some more uh, interview with uh, a UK MSP, some Q&A, and another gift card. Thanks. Now, I know we just talked to Market Abdul about what Falcon Store is bringing to the world, but I think it's important to make sure that there's a sense of clarity on exactly what Store Safe is and what it does before we continue on. I'm going to put a slide on your screen right now that'll show you some of the benefits that Falcon Store is bringing to the world with Store Safe. First of all, Store Safe is a software only backup to disk solution. It's a virtual tape library solution. And I'll talk about why that's important in just a second. It scales to four petabytes on premises and unlimited petabytes in the cloud. This means that even the largest environments can benefit from what Store Safe is doing. It brings six times faster improvement to most backup environments. This is 6x faster than tape, and this is uh, great when we start talking about shrinking backup windows, which are still a thing that many organizations have challenges with. StoreSafe delivers up to 320 terabytes per hour of throughput. You're not going to see that with a lot of tape solutions on the market. Even more impressive, Falcon Store indicates that they're going to bring 20 to 1 deduplication as a global backup target. Now, the reason I say it that way is because when we talk to Mike later, you're going to hear that his customers are seeing something that is significantly greater than 20 to 1. Falcon Store is being... Uh, pretty cautious here with the number, which is really good for them to do, but real world experience is proving something even better than what Falcon Store is claiming. And 20 to 1 is absolutely spectacular, but what customers are seeing um, is even better. And what customers are experiencing with Store Safe is a 90% savings in cost without the need, need to forklift their existing environments. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second as well. And Falcon Store has hundreds of active resellers and MSPs worldwide delivering on the StoreSafe solution. And on your screen, you'll also see that Falcon Store is partnering with the world's biggest companies to bring this solution to market. So they support backup and restore partners, including ArcServe and Commvault, Veeam, Oracle, Veritas, the whole nine yards, pretty much what most of us are running in our environments, Falcon Store can support with StoreSafe. On the cloud partner front for storage capacity, Microsoft Azure, IBM Cloud, AWS, Wasabi. So, so Falcon Store is able to partner, help you partner with the world's biggest clouds from AWS to um, very uh, budget friendly challengers, including Wasabi. And that's fantastic for your budget and for your, ex your, your growing data capacity needs when it comes to backup and recovery. But StoreSafe also works with on-premises solutions, including your local SAN providers from his, you know, such as Hitachi, Pure Storage, IBM, HPE, Dell, um, all of the above, as well as local object storage partners, including IBM, Hitachi, and Dell EMC. At present, Falcon Store has thousands of customers and over an exabyte of data under management. That's huge. That's really significant and something I think um, should give people a level of comfort. The Falcon Store knows what they're doing. And they have some incredibly big names um, when it comes to customers that are protecting their data with StoreSafe. Um, and that's uh, um, a testament to what they've built. One of the, some of the things that I like about StoreSafe are, uh, number one, as a, you know, I was a CIO for a long time. One of the things that I never liked was a forklift upgrade especially when it came to my data protection environment. So when I had to replace data backup software, essentially, um, I would have to keep old tape libraries on hand, then I would have to keep copies of the original backup software on hand just to satisfy retention requirements. So if I switched from one product to another, for whatever the retention period was, for what I still had being supported by the old product, I would have to keep that online and patched and current just in case I've ever ha I ever had to restore um, that old data from that old system. Um, that can get expensive and that can also really put RTO at risk um, when it comes to having to recover um, in the event of, uh, of an emergency or a disaster. Um, the more systems you have to bring online to make something work, especially old systems that may not be as well supported as you'd like, uh, the more at risk your recovery time objective becomes. 
And that's something I don't think can be overlooked, um, especially in a world that is literally 24-7 for most organizations these days. Um, second, I really was loath to throw away existing investments. Um, there may be, have been things I liked about my existing backup software, but it just didn't support at the time, for example, you know, the cloud provider that I wanted or this, I couldn't store it to a, a local storage array that I was already using. Um, so I would either have to go buy something that really didn't fit my environment, which operationally is not desirable, um, or I would have to go find another storage solution. What Falcon Store does is essentially install a shim into my environment. Now that word, you know, some people don't like that word, but I like it in this context because essentially what they're doing is I can bring a virtual tape library into any supported backup software. And that virtual tape library becomes a device that that backup software can just use natively. And I think that's really important. You don't have to make any architectural changes to your backup software to support what Falcon Store is bringing with StoreSafe. And now you have the power of the cloud behind you and of any local storage you want. If you have backup software that doesn't like your storage array that you're trying to use, for example, Falcon Store can make that work. Or if you have backup software that you'd like to store your software, your backups in Wasabi, for example, um, Falcon Store can do that for you as well by virtue of the fact that it's using this virtual tape library. And to keep your data protected, essentially Falcon Store is sharding the data among a whole bunch of specialized containers that they are then storing in lots of different places, um, just like you would want with any regular backup solution. And to recover that data, you get enough of the containers back and Falcon Store puts them back together and can recover your entire environment, even if you have containers that are spread across multiple clouds, disk uh, storage arrays on site, um, and wherever. And so essentially, you're able to store your data wherever, whenever you need it, and Falcon Store keeps track of where it all is, and as you need to recover, it pulls it back from the wherever it's stored regard, without regard for um, what the backup software what, you know supported originally, and it can help you rebuild your environment in the event of a disaster. So what they've done is install... Um, a tool into your backup environment that essentially brings a level of agnosticism to the environment that we really haven't seen before. It doesn't matter what your backup software is. It doesn't matter what your storage is. And in large part, it doesn't matter what your cloud is. Falcon Store can use any of the above to help you accelerate your data protection and archive goals in a way that's extremely friendly to your budget. You get a choice of what you want to use for backup software. So whether you need something that's more robust or something that provides you with, you know, a wider set of options, it doesn't matter. If you would like, rather use um, a more expensive provider such as AWS for um, a, as a backup target or a more budget-friendly provider such as Wasabi, it doesn't matter. Falcon Store brings you a level of choice that we haven't seen in data protection software um, in, an, uh, in a very long time. And so I'm really impressed by what they've done. Um, I do think that their 20 to 1 deduplication um, target, as I've mentioned before, is um, it sounds too good to be true, but it's actually proving out to be not even what they're able to, not even what the best they can do. Um, as we'll hear from uh, Mike Borum from Blue Chip shortly, he's seen 80 and 100 to 1 deduplication ratios across their target uh, backup customers. And I think that's uh, pretty incredible. But obviously, backups, you know, it's not unusual to see higher deduplication rates on backups just because of the uniformity um, of, the, of the data that's being uh, managed. Um, but to see 80 to 100 to 1 ratios is still pretty incredible. And it really helps you understand um, just how powerful this software can be in terms of helping you rein in what can be out of control costs um, in a backup environment. So we're going to be talking to um, Mike Borum again uh, li a little bit later um, from Blue Chip to hear his experience. But we're also going to do some Q&A um, shortly with the Falcon Store folks about what they're actually doing um, with the software. After we talk to Mike, we'll do a Q&A with him. And I thank you again for attending today's event. And I hope you've learned a lot so far and there's a lot more to come. 
So I did the gift card a little bit early, um, but we're going to be asking you one more poll question, then moving on with our presentation. And the question is, how much data are you protecting today? Um, you know, up to 500 terabytes, somewhere up to a petabyte, one to three petabytes, or do you have um, something just a bit more substantial at three plus petabytes? Um, obviously, um, Falcon Store can support any of the above, um, but it's interesting to understand sort of where people are in terms of what they have to, what they actually have to protect. Um, it's actually um, uh, uh, pretty incredible just how far this can scale. And we'll be talking, you're actually hearing about that a little bit um, in some of the Q&A segments that we do, because we have some really good questions around that. Um, in fact, one of the questions we have right now is from Mr. Gong, who has asked that, you know, how is it priced per terabyte per system? We're going to answer that question shortly um, in the event today. I'm going to bring up the results of this poll so you can kind of see where you fall um, in terms of the rest of the audience. And a lot of you, no, not surprised, are under 500 terabytes, but a lot of you are above that. So there's about a half and a half mix of below and above 500 terabytes of protection. And we want to know what you're running. So as you know, Falcon Store can work with literally any of the above. If you have more than one, please tell us. We'd like to understand what people are running because it's 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 important to know just how well the software is going to um, work in everybody's environments. Um, I see so far a lot of Veeam, which is not a surprise, uh, and a lot of other. So there's a lot of you running things that are not on the list. We obviously didn't make this an exhaustive list, um, but I'm going to close the poll here in just a second so we can continue on. I don't want to take too much time on this, but this is handy information um, to help us understand where our audience is in their data protection and archive journey. And I apologize if you haven't had time yet, but I'm going to click the results button. And as I mentioned, Veeam and other are the clear winners. And we're going to continue on with our event. So, Abdul, one of the big things that organizations are really looking for these days um, are solutions that bring, you know, analytics to the to front and center um, in everything they're doing. So they can do capacity planning. So they can just do ongoing planning. What does StoreSafe bring to the bring to an organization to help them gain more visibility into their backup environments? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Thanks, Scott. And we have seen this a lot from our customers. They want to be able to have visibility and and, and see all their SLAs are met. Uh, StoreSafe is managed by our web GUI server, which is what we call uh, StoreSite, and that comes uh, fully loaded with some some very good features that that our customers are very excited about it. Uh, for those that, that are using it, at least uh, there are. Uh, rules and alerts that you can have. There are smart rules that we put in that you can decide what is it that you want to be alerted on. You can get text message or you can get email notification on that. Uh, capacity information per client level, per server level, per storage pool level, um, or, or a physical device level. Very important um, you know, in an in a MSP environment, for example, right? So you get that capacity prediction and that capacity prediction is, is very smart, is based on your own usage for the past month, two months, three months, whatever that time frame is, how you have used it, we predict this is where you're running out so you can plan uh, or the customer can plan accordingly. We have chargeback, for example, where you can say, what is the minimum cashback or discount from MSP perspective? It's a very, um, uh, frequently asked feature um, uh, from our MSP customers um, where they can set a price or they can give a discount and all the reporting you see there. Um, so some very um, you know, uh, good features in, in terms of analytics and reporting and small rules and all that, that's, that's within the store site. So it sounds like the analytics feature is helping individual customers do better capacity planning, knowing when they have to add more or what, you know, where things are. And for your MSP customers, it's enabling a chargeback mechanism that helps them uh, help their customers do better and help, you know, helps them obviously make some money too. Absolutely, yep. Excellent, thank you. You're welcome. So Abdul, with all this data that's being collected, I mean, obviously Falcon Store can probably help customers with it in some way. What are some of the ways that, that you are helping your customers do better with their backend environments with the data that's being gathered from from their from their systems. 
Yeah, absolutely. So there's a tons of data that we collect from client level, uh, storage level, network level, fiber channel level. And as, 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 as part of uh, uh, my team, our responsibility is to work with these customers when they're planning their capacity and go over these numbers. This is the trend. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, there's trend reports, there are custom trends that can be created and, and, and generated by the customers. But we go through uh, with customer every step of the way to make sure that the right decisions are made and that they are fully aware of their environment and how they are utilizing and their expectations are met. So, Abdul, you work with specific customers. Now, I, I know you can't always name names, So, but if you had to think about you know, a, a specific customer and some of the challenges that they were seeing, what have they overcome when it comes to their these environments with StoreSafe? So, of course, there are a lot of customers that I can name, but just you know, over the past week, I've been busy with a customer uh, who does not have a good handle on their front end, on all the environments that are being backed up. And so they want to look at how much ingest is coming, how much data is getting replicated on the server level and stuff like that. So we generate all these reports and we go, uh, you know, step by step with them to explain to them. And so at the end of the day, everything makes sense uh, for them. And so how did StoreSafe help them? What was better at the end of the day once you gathered all this data and you were able to do something with it? What did they actually do that was actionable to address those concerns or those, those findings? Yeah, so the data actually helped us um, to, to fix the backup regime and, and, and there were some correction, corrective action, uh, actions that were taken on the front and how, how the data needs to be backed up instead of doing a full backup every day, maybe they should do it um, every week, for example, some workloads that were not supposed to be backed up. And so that eventually helps them in better understanding their capacity and, 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 and the, uh, the capacity prediction gives them those, uh, those details. So um, overall, having a greater command and control over the entire environment from front end to the back end consolidation. So rather than just basically helping, helping the customer replace or extend the capabilities they already had, you were able to help them make operational improvements that even gave them further benefit than they than just from the product itself, but you're using the the intelligence you've gathered from the product to help them make those operational changes that were that are so critical to them being successful with what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. We're always uh, very um, you know involved with our customers because again, we want less support calls, and so a better operation from their side means less support calls from us. So yeah, absolutely. And StoreSip is giving us those data points to be able to discuss as a partner. We're, we're considered as partners with all our customers. Their success is our success. Let's support calls, happy customer. Everybody loves that. So yes. All right, we have some questions from the audience for Mark and Abdul. The first one is for you, Abdul, and I'm gonna be reading my screen to get it. How does Falcon Store Store Save help me address security and ransomware concerns in my organization? Thanks, Scott. Um, Falcon Store Store Safe is installed on a hardened Linux OS, and our deduplication enables us to keep data on a block level that has no context for outsiders. Um, it's just on a block level unique data um, that that is not susceptible to a ransomware. It's not file level deduplication as other competitors. Some competitors do it. It's really on the block level, and that's not susceptible to attack. All right, um, Mark, is there a way to configure this for active-active versus active-passive uh, capabilities? Absolutely. Uh, uh, many of our customers, most of our customers set up a dual configuration for to protect their uh, backup repositories. And uh, depending on the customer, they have that choice. Uh, one customer in particular that, that um, we work with has uh, two data centers uh, there. It's an active active uh, pair and each one of them replicates to the uh, active store safe at the other side. So that's it, a very common configuration for us uh, where, where there's multiple sites in an enterprise. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we have some more questions from our audience for Mark and Abdul. Abdul, what does Falcon Store do about the cost of the cloud when it comes to backup? 
Falcon Store solution offers the duplication that reduces the, the, the data or the, the storage footprint in the cloud by 95%, hence giving you, uh, you know, um, a cheaper storage uh, because you're using less. And also the egress fee, is because of this duplication uh, capability, it saves you on the egress fee when you're retrieving that data. And Mark, we have an associated question I'm going to ask you right now that's uh, along the lines for deduplication. And it's, what is different about Falcon Store's dedupe from everyone else? Uh, several things. Uh, the fact that uh, we are, number one, context aware, uh, where we do understand uh, what tape software was sent to us, so we can offset around that. We know how to deal with uh, what is inserted by the tape software. Number two, it's a block level deduplication. We use a sliding window to find the best matches in the deduplication. Um, it's a technology we've been uh, developing literally for close to uh, 20 years now with several patents on it. So we believe we put in a lot of tricks to do the absolute best job of reduction. Very good, thank you. And we've got some more questions from the audience. Um, Abdul, this one's gonna be for you. Um, what does Falcon Store do to help automate data protection? We're overloaded with too many applications and too few people um, for all of this. What, is, what, what can you do to help? Um, our solution really gives that consolidated view. One, one GUI, you can do anything. You can see your backups, you can see your libraries, your physical libraries, virtual libraries. Everything can be consolidated from uh, or managed from one uh, management GUI and also automated. All the policies, replication, exporting and importing of containers or, or tapes can all be automated and, and, and you get alerts and reports on everything, make sure that everything is working as expected. Great, thank you. Um, some more questions from the audience from Mark and Abdul. Um, Mark, this one's for you, and it's around data validity. Um, it's there's there's got to be some kind of a difference in validating data when it comes to tape or the data containers that you're storing in the cloud. How are you using containers for that validation? That that's a great question and one that we think that uh, there's a lot of differentiation for StoreSafe. Also, I mean, if you think about trying to validate tapes that you've sent off to Iron Mountain, how, how would that happen? Well, you've got to bring them back to your data center. You've got to mount all the tapes. You've got to be able to basically rerun every tape to make sure that it's still intact the way that, that you originally recorded it. When we export to the containers with the dedupe data, we have checksums within those containers. And one of the reasons that we chose an industry standard container uh, for our uh, exports is that we can also run a program basically uh, uh, from that container. And what we do is put the checksum in when we build the container. And at any time you can kick off uh, a validation where it will recalculate the checksum compared to the original and give you status, whether it's good or bad. So uh, you can imagine uh, thousands of containers out in the cloud. You could put it on just a policy that say once a month, you want all of them to validate themselves and give you the answer. And on a single screen, you can see a, a field of green because they're all uh, still validated and in good shape. If one is not, then you could take corrective action, get it fixed. Very good, thank you for that answer. All right, so we have another question from the audience for Mark and Abdul, and this one is around scale. So essentially, when do you need to scale beyond a single node? And if so, um, how do you do that with Falcon Store Store Safe? Um, twofold. Number one, if it's performance, obviously, or if it's capacity, you can do it on both. Uh, and, and in both cases, you would just add another Falcon Store um, server, and you will also add the capacity on the back, uh, back end and expand the repository. So it's very scalable. You don't have to start big, you can start small and then go as you need to go. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question for Mark and Abdul. This one is for Mark. Um, this one is, my organization wants to adopt some kind of a backup as a service offering. Um, how does Falcon Store Store Stave help me make this happen? Yeah, backup as a service, and, and I'll use an example. Some of uh, an MSP uh, who 
have a number of customers using them as a backup service, uh, and we fully support this. We have a multi-tenant architecture, so you can isolate uh, different customers. They can only see their, their own portion uh, of the backups. It also gives you multi-tiers of security so that uh, customer A doesn't wander into customer B uh, data or their backups. Uh, so we have a, a very partitioned, uh, secure architecture uh, to make uh, backup of it as a service very successful. We also uh, can show you the, um, the results and the analytics at an individual customer level as opposed to uh, the full system. Great, thank you so much. And we have more questions. Um, and so I'm gonna ask this one, um, I'm gonna ask this one of you again, Mark. Um, StoreSafe initially captures backup data to local block storage. A few questions. How much local capacity is required for StoreSafe to operate? Well, we believe, you know, we've been talking about our, our deduplication and compression uh, technologies, which, uh, depending on your dedupe ratio, means the amount that you have to store locally in the repository can uh, be much smaller than what you're actually uh, backing up. Uh, we can start you with a very small repository, you know, uh, five, 10 terabytes, whatever your needs are. As, as they grow over the years, as, uh, as your capacity requirements increase, you can add more uh, storage on there up to the point of uh, just shy of four petabytes uh, for a system at that point. Uh, we would certainly, sit, by that time, we would suggest that you start uh, archiving some of that off to another location, like to the cloud, um, so that you just, you don't have to ever get that big with a local repository. But we give you a lot of flexibility in making that decision. Excellent, thank you. All right, we have another question from the audience. This one's gonna be for Abdul. Um, the question is around recovery, especially since data is compressed and deduped. It stands the reason that the original backup software in StoreSafe will be required will be required in a recovery scenario. If the original StoreSafe server is lost due to a disaster or security issue, how does reconstruction take place? Um, so, from a configuration standpoint, you are covered by high availability on the local site and between StoreSafe and StoreSafe. So, if one is gone, is gone, the other server can take over the personality and, and give it that restore. If if replication is enabled, you would be able to recall the replica copy. If this is just a standalone server, we still have ways of restoring our single store safe server from the configuration repository that we automatically save out uh, on regular intervals, uh, either on existing hardware or, on a or a brand new hardware. So you will be able to do the restore of your backups. Excellent, thank you. And we have another question. This is from Mark and it's around security again. Um, essentially, we have encryption keys that we have to deal with somewhere because data is encrypted on your appliance, but how, where are encryption keys stored and how are they kept available in the event of a disaster? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, today, we do keep the encryption keys uh, encoded within the StoreSafe platform uh, so that uh, uh, the, they don't get... Um, handled by a user, admins, et cetera. It's, it's all self-contained within the platform, but also uh, if the data is replicated to another site, uh, the, of course we need the encryption keys so we can be able to restore to uh, that site too. So it's a, a store safe to store safe private communication. Perfect, thank you. Mark, we have a very important question that we have to ask, and that's around how is Falcon Store licensed? How do I buy this thing? It, it is a capacity license, and as we've mentioned, uh, our management interface uh, store site is a single screen that can manage uh, all of your Falcon Store servers within a within an enterprise. Uh, so it is a sum total of all the capacity that you're using. So it's a single license uh, for an enterprise customer that, that covers all of the uh, used capacity within the environment. So it doesn't matter how many store safe servers I have, it just matters how much capacity I have under management. That is correct. 
Excellent. Thank you so much. Sure. And as we get close to the end of today's event, there's a critical question that we need to get an answer to. And that's how can you learn more and actually give StoreSafe a try for yourself? Abdul, how can people that are interested in improving their backup environments with StoreSafe learn more? And how can they actually kick the tires on it a little bit? Uh, there are multiple approaches to that. Obviously, we can give them a demo to, to kind of show them the software in action, uh, but also work with them to, to deploy it uh, as a POC it, within their environment to make sure that we can back up their data, real data, and show them the real, the real uh, results. So we can do POCs. We can do in-house POC with them. We can do in their uh, data center. Uh, there are multiple ways to, to achieve that. And if they want to reach out to Falcon Store, they should just go to falconstore.com and fill out and, and contact you? That is correct. They can go to support and then just contact support and we will we'll handle it from there. Yeah. That sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be moving on with our next segment here. Don't forget to ask good questions. There'll be more poll questions coming up later in the event. We're getting close to the end. We're going to be hearing from Blue Chip here shortly. So please keep those questions coming in. And now I'm pleased to introduce Mike Borum, pre sales consultant with Blue Chip. Mike, thanks for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about you and a little bit about Blue Chip before we get started? Good afternoon. Thanks for the invite. Um, my name is Mike. I'm from Blue Chip. I've uh, been with the company for 12 years now, and I'm a pre sales consultant. Um, Blue Chip are a managed services provider, um, offering services remotely and via our two data centers in the UK. So Blue Chip is a heavy user of Falcon Store. Can you give us sort of the introduction into why you chose Falcon Store and some of the primary benefit that's bringing to your customers? We'll get into a deeper discussion on this over the next little bit here. Um, yeah, we, um, when Blue Chip uh, decided to um, go into Take Plus Backup, we uh, we looked at a number of products and um, found that Falcon Store was um, the easiest to deploy, the most scalable and flexible, and was a very reliable product that, that gave us um, fantastic G-Duke ratios that enabled us to um, do lots of wonderful things that we couldn't do with tape. Now, there's lots of um, appliances out there that will do things like dedupe and stuff like that, like data domain. Where does Falcon Store um, so, sort of excel when you compared it against some of those other solutions? Yeah, so we, we found that Falcon Store give us some leverage in the IBMI uh, power space in particular. It allowed us to do um, bare metal restores directly from Falcon Store virtual tapes rather than having to use um, physical tape or DVDs to boot the system, which you would have to do with data domain. We also found that the, the DJ ratio was, was far, far greater using Falcon Store than, than other products. So let's get into that a little bit. What kind of a dedupe ratio are you seeing in your customer base using Falcon Store? So on the IBMI platform, we're regularly seeing over 100 to 1 DJ ratio. and in some environments which have got uh, huge databases, we're, we're seeing figures that, that way exceed that. Um, what kind of hardware do you use in your cloud to support the Falcon Store environment? Um, so primarily we're an IBM I shop, so, so most of our data center appliances are Lenovo based. However, recently we've been using uh, a lot of Dell kit out in the field. So we supply um, some units out to remote customers and we, with the Falcon Store software pre-configured, they replicate the data back into Blue Chip and we can, um, we can operate disaster recovery services from our, our data centers in Bedford. We do that for a number of customers in the UK and um, in, in America as well. Now I asked the question about you know server brands and stuff like that, but the reality is, is it doesn't really matter, does it? I mean, Falcon Store runs on pretty much anything. Yeah, Falcon Store will run on 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 lots and lots of different shapes and sizes of kit, from from very basic entry level uh, configurations all the way up to clusters of servers with lots of memory and flash disks and so on and so forth. So when we start thinking about modern organizations, we think about scale and sprawl and companies being sort of spread all over the planet. 
And there's a lot of those kinds of locations that aren't going to have re reliable and robust and performant uh, internet connectivity. How does the Falcon Store solution work in organizations that might be bandwidth constrained or that might have less than ideal conditions from a connectivity perspective? Falcon Store is actually really good at that. Um, and, and in fact, the more you throw at the Falcon Store application, the better the DG ratio b becomes. It, it's a global DG ratio. Um, so, so small internet connections, ADSL connections are really not an issue. We can even throttle the appliances so that they can use just the very smallest amount of bandwidth. So one of the um, benefits of the solution is basically it's moving delta blocks, right? It's not having to move everything every night to do a data backup or to archive to the you know to various clouds and things like that. And um, my understanding is that that's one of the one of the the claims to fame for for the Falcon Store solution um, in terms of its reliability and performance when it comes to internet connectivity. Are you how are your customers? Um, experiencing this? Are they seeing really great benefits from a networking standpoint um, with the Falcon Store solution? They see lots of benefits from the Falcon Store solution. They've got a, a reliable solution that, 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 that works every day. It's automated. It's monitored. Um, you know, you don't have to get involved. Um, Blue Chip put our service wrap around the Falcon Store um, products. Um, but, but to be honest, we, we don't have to do a lot of work. It, it, it does what it says on the tin. So from a deployment perspective, I mean, organizations are sort of, uh, I would say, skeptical when it comes to claims of it's really easy to deploy anything that's going to touch the backup environment. Because we've heard the horror stories about, you know, tape library compatibility with future versions of software or even future tapes and things like that. Or, you know claims about it really what works with you know different kinds of storage but falcon store is a bit different i mean you don't have to do a rip and replace i mean what what kind of a deployment experience are your customers seeing when they deploy the falcon store store safe solution um in 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 many many cases and it's a very high percentage we 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 have absolutely no impact during installation configuration and, and go live um customers do not have to reboot servers or um anything like that it, it, it's very very behind the scenes um, in many cases especially for the IBM I platform it's just a change in, in device name so yesterday they were backing up on TAPO 1 and today they're backing up on TAPO 2 so when we think about the blue chip cloud how many customers are do you have using store safe and what kind of capacity under management do you have um, so we've got um, around about 15 petabytes of uh, raw storage on the shop floor um, across our managed service customers in the two data centers. Um, there's a, a lot more out in the field at customers' own sites. And we manage that all through um, two main clusters in one in each of our data centers. For your customers, What's their reaction to the price tag that they're seeing with their backup recovery once they deploy the Falcon Store solution? Are there are there concerns? Do they look at it and say, "Wow, this is this is great"? Or, I mean, what what kind of a reaction do you see? Um, so, initial um, initial initially, it's always um, wow, that's more than tape. But hey, it is more than tape, and and. Once we speak about the benefits, um, automation, flexibility, scalability, security, all those kinds of things, that price is forgotten. Yeah, and you know, when we look at the solution itself, I mean, yeah, I mean, tape is cheap. That's one of the things that people, uh, that's one of the reasons this stayed around for so long is it's just a cheap medium, but it's cheap for a reason. Um, and, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, drawbacks to a tape only architecture that we all know and hate, right? I mean, um, there's there's just challenges to overcome. So it, it's not a surprise to hear that um, it's a little bit more expensive than tape, but uh, the ability to deploy essentially a new backup infrastructure without a forklift, I would assume is music to people's ears at some point during the discussions. Oh, for sure. And, and, and it goes back to this ease of deployment, the flexibility, the ability to grow and scale up as time goes on.
Um, we add capacity on the fly. We, we, we change configuration on the fly. We don't need to, to you know, carry out heavy configuration changes. It's, it's all very easy. It's done through the Falcon Store uh, GUI. Uh, and that makes life easy for a managed service provider like Blue Chip. So this might be a tough one to answer. You don't have to name names, but if you had to choose a favorite store safe deployment story, um, is there one that stands out that's like, this was a, a, a real challenge, but we ended up solving some real business critical issues with the deployment? Yeah, we have a, a large pharmaceutical organization who who, who uses the, the Falcon Store products across the globe. We had many challenges, many small countries with those those small unreliable connections that you speak about. Um, we were able to deploy in each country, replicate the data back to our data centers in Bedford and provide tier one services for, for managed recovery. Mike, when you have customers that are expressing interest in Falcon Store and you're specking a solution for them, you know, what are some of the points of discussion or, or questions that they might have um, that you have to help them with during the during those discussions. Um, the, the the questions are are actually um, few and far between. It's a very easy process. We need to understand the, the size of the environment, um, the the amount of data the customer wants to to back up, and how long they want to keep it. It, it. it almost is as simple as that. We have a really good set of tools that allow us to calculate those those numbers and come up with a, um, a predefined configuration and uh, a financial proposal. You know, one of the things I like about what I just heard is there's very little discussion about needing to have, you know, discussions around what we would call nerd knobs in some ways. Like, what, you know, what, what dials do we have to tweak to make this work, you know, in the best way possible and stuff like that. Um, it sounds like there's a focus on the intended outcomes and the Falcon Store Store Safe Solution provides those inputs without a lot of thought. Is that an accurate statement? It's a very accurate statement. There's very little effort that goes into to creating a, a, a right fit. Um, there's no special equipment. There are no special this or special that. It's it's a it's a, a platform agnostic backup service. In terms of some of the things that have impacted the world in recent months or years, I guess at this point, um, COVID. How has COVID changed organizations' perspective on data protection? And has, has this increased interest in certain, some ways around what Falcon Store is bringing to the table um, with StoreSafe? Yeah, for sure. The pandemic gave us a number of challenges. Um, I think we all agree that, uh, and in particular, um, a lot of organizations lost the ability to, to manage tape physically. They couldn't go on site. They couldn't, um, they couldn't use tape carrier services. They, they couldn't, couldn't move around as freely as they did before. So Falcon Store gave us the opportunity to, to do that quick and easy deployment that we spoke about um, and to, to automate the whole backup process and delivery of that data off site. Customer no leads no longer needs to worry about going on site to change your tape and, and somewhere safe to store it. Yeah, there's definitely some beauty in essentially installing for all, all intents and purposes as a shim into an existing environment without disrupting anything and be able to configure that shim to spit data wherever it needs to go. I mean, I would imagine that's, that's increased the level of flexibility that organizations have around their backup and retention and archival um, in some pretty significant ways. Um, especially as we stick in this remote, who knows how long we'll be in a, in the, a new remote reality. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's gonna be kind of things that a lot of people have to think about, isn't it? And in many cases, Scott, it, it's, it's enabled customers who have taken that leap away from tape to, to see how great it is and to expand upon it. And, you know, the, the possibilities are almost endless. And, and we've seen that in many, many companies. They've, they've taken, taken the jump, taken the leap of faith, they're using blue chip and the Falcon store product and they love it. They, they, they feel safe with it. They feel safe knowing that it's looked after and monitored and they expand on that. I don't think there's any better testimonial than that. And I think that's a good place for us to wrap. Mike, thank you very much um, for this discussion about the 
actual real world, real customer view um, that people are seeing with Falcon Store and Store Safe. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a pleasure and thank you for the opportunity. Um, we have a long term, long term partnership with uh, with Falcon Store, and uh, long may that continue. So one of the things that we're hearing today is there's a lot of goodness in the Falcon Store Star Safe solution. And I can imagine some people thinking, this seems too good to be true. And you know, if I were a customer looking at some of these benefits, I would have the same questions. How do you, and have you heard that objection? And what do you do to overcome it and prove that this is in fact the real deal? Um, thanks for the question. It, it's a good question. And we, we have seen that objection. Um, it becomes less and less because of the amount of clients we have using the Falcon Store products with Blue Chip. We've got over 300 systems in the data centers all backing up to, to Falcon Store without any use of, of physical tape. Um, and we, we are able to demonstrate those recovery points and we are able to demonstrate that that, that, that data is there and ready to be used whenever the customer wants it. Mike, one of the things that people have to contend with is things around regulatory compliance and security of backup and archive data. How does Falcon Store help enable um, the help enable those things, and how do you overcome any potential objections around compliance and security of the solution? Well, that's a great question, Scott. We we have a, a fantastic um, a fantastic encryption model with the Falcon Store product. And we can also use encryption on the storage appliances as well. So you, you've got double encryption there. Um, we've got a number of customers who are in industries which are heavily regulated. Um, those uh, regulation controls have, have been applied to Falcon Store and the appliances and the, and the software uh, and the encryption. And it, it, it all stands up. It, it meets regulation every time. And we have another question from our audience for Mike. Um, you know, one of the things that we see a lot of IT pros want are, you know, what I call nerd knobs, knobs and dials to turn up things like dedupe and compression and try to be able to control that. But we don't want that if we can avoid it. How does Falcon Store help maximize the, the outcomes these people are trying to achieve without having to expose complex controls? Um, it, it's really easy with a Falcon Store product because it does it all itself. There's there's very very little for us to to fiddle with, um, and uh, you know us uh, IT nerds don't really like that. But it's that's why it's such a stable stable product. That's why it gives us a, a, a fantastic reliability uh, record because there is there's nothing to break. And that's really good. I mean, that's uh, I'm. Uh a big fan of simplicity in outcomes and technology solutions, and often they're hard to find. And one of the things I find is that simplicity is actually really hard from the vendor perspective. If something's simple, it means that the vendor has done their homework on making it that way for the end user. And I'm sure you're seeing that with, with Falcon Store. We are, it's, it's a simple product. It, it, it does what it says it does every time it's reliable. It's flexible. There's, there's so many reasons why we use it across our, our business. Mike, without Falcon Store, what would Blue Chip have done to manage the increase in number of tenants and capacity under management for backup and archive? You know what, Scott, that would have been a complete headache. Um, as our customer base has grown, we, you know, we've gone in, in excess of 300 platforms in the data centers. To, to back that up using tape would have been would have been tape hell. Um, Falcon Store has enabled us to to implement a, a system and a process that that works all day every day. It backs up these customers. It, it protects their data and it allows us to recover it when we need to. We've we've reduced our human input for backup by ninety five plus percent. It's really, really allowed us to grow the business. So expand on what you mean by you reduced human input into backup 95%. That's a really important statistic. Yeah, so if we take 300 systems and we have to load a tape, at least one tape, and we have to unload that tape and load it again every day, we've got to take it off site and we've got to store it. That takes people. 
um, mm -hmm. and, and that takes their time away from, from an, an effort, away from doing something that's far more valuable. Yeah, I mean, you know, I hadn't considered it like that. So that's that's a that's a really important part of the equation that people need to think about in terms of when it comes to their backup and archives. So thank you for making sure that uh, that our audience uh, has that top of mind. And we have one more question for Mike, and it's around SLAs, RPOs, RTOs, things like that. How do you manage SLAs in a Falcon Store environment to make sure that recoverability can meet business objectives? That's, that's a great question. And all of our customers are different. Um, they're, they're all best spoke in their own way. They have different needs and different regulations they need to comply to. Um, so with the Falcon Store product, it's really easy to to um, tune the RPO and the RTO um, based on the customer's requirements with very, very little change. Very good. Mike, thank you very much. And I would like to thank all of our presenters and our guests today. That was a fantastic and robust discussion. I hope everyone learned a lot. We have one or possibly two more questions for you. And we're also going to give away another Amazon gift card. The first question is, what's your main approach to off-site data protection? Um, do you have a disk at a second site, tape, public cloud, or some combination of the three? Um, so we'd love to get your thoughts on that. Then we'll have one more question during which we will be giving away um, our second $300 Amazon gift card of today's event. Um, again, thank you to um, to Mark, um, uh, uh, sorry, to the folks from Falcon Store as well as from Blue Chip today. Um, it's always nice to get actual customers like uh, Blue Chip on events like this so that you can see exactly how they're using the kind of products that we're talking about um, in these events. And I'm going to close the poll for this question and launch to the next one. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you the results first. A lot of you are using this somewhere else. No question, no surprise on tape, given the previous poll. Um, a lot of you are already using public cloud, and many of you are using all three. Our final question is going to be around, how would you like to learn more? Um, do you want to learn more about from a data sheet, another webinar, some case studies, some pricing information? Um, when it comes to learning more about StoreSafe, how would you like Falcon Store to reach out and sort of help you understand the solution? So. With this poll question up on the screen, this is a really important one. We're going to be giving away our second gift card. I'm going to do it in just a second. I want to let some more people respond to this question first. All right. Our second gift card winner is Jay uh, Lineberry, I believe, from Illinois. Jay and Mallory DeRoche are our winners for today's gift card. We'll be picking our best question gift card out from actually a ton of questions that we got in from our audience today. And we'll be reaching out to you after today's event with information on how to collect your winnings. So as always, thank you to everyone for attending today's event. I'm gonna leave this poll question up on the screen for a few more minutes. Um, but So please uh, make sure you take time to, to answer this question. Thank you to everyone for attending. Thank you to Falcon Store um, for their partnership on this event. And thank you to our great presenters for making this a fantastic, robust, and in-depth discussion on a uh, revolutionary new product to help us all do better with data protection and archive.